Now we'll give you a brief review of the actual bending itself. We say review because the benders should be familiar to you, since you've completed the course on hand tools and their use. The bending of tubing and small pipe is considerably different, as with the bending tools. We do want you to be certain to use the correct tool for the bending task. Always use the correct size bender for the tube or pipe you're bending. Be very careful that your bend marks are marked clearly and positioned accurately. Your completed bends will be right on the nose if you take extra care in laying out and using the proper bend lines. First, we'll concentrate on tube bending. As we mentioned at the beginning of the course, tubing usually comes in three standard sizes, quarter inch, three-eighths, and one-half inch. There are two benders built specifically for each of these sizes. Each bender has a bending form with a set radius. You may remember that we mentioned this very fact. The radius of a bend for a certain size of tubing will always be the same, no matter what the degree of the bend. This is true because of the bender itself. It has a bending form with a set radius, so each bend on the same bender will have the same radius. This is what a fixed radius copper tubing bender looks like. The tube is simply inserted in the bender with the marks on your tubing aligned with those on the bender. You will usually begin with the hash mark of your bender set at zero and your first mark on your tubing lined up directly with the hash mark. You then bend the tubing like this until you've reached the angle you want whether it be 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 90 degrees. You simply keep applying pressure on the handle until this hash mark reaches the degree that you want. You then release the tubing and make any other bends that are required. Although not all tubing benders are exactly the same as this one, most of them are constructed along the same basic lines. Your instructor will explain any difference in your tools. The other type of bending you're concerned with is small pipe bending. These bends will also be made by hand, but with a different type of tool. This is the type of hand pipe bender usually used for small pipes. It also comes in different sizes to fit the pipe you want to bend. This will probably come closer to the method you may have used to bend pipe at home. You simply secure the pipe in a vise lined up with the first bend mark and slip the T part of the bender over the pipe like this. You then line up the edge of the bender with the second bend mark and check to be sure that you have it positioned correctly. To bend the pipe, you pull the handle in a smooth, even motion, causing the pipe to bend. Be sure that you keep the bender handle level with the pipe. After a few practice bends, you'll become adept at judging the amount of pull needed and where the bend should stop. Stop periodically and check to see how close your band is. If the band is too much, reverse the pressure and push the pipe back until it meets your specifications. Once again, remember where the bend marks on the pipe should be positioned. The first bend mark should be aligned with the top of the vise, like this. The second mark will be aligned with the edge of the bender. The pressure you exert will bend the pipe between the two marks to the specifications you want. The smoothness and evenness of the bend will depend on you. Always be sure to keep the pressure steady, even, and level. This is very important, especially when you have two bends on the same pipe and you want them to be in line. You'll understand much more clearly once you've tried it for yourself. We have some questions for you on pipe and tube bending. You'll find them in exercise number three of your workbook.